mailbag time again. This is a review item. This could be quite interesting. So make sure you stick around this. I'll do this towards the end of the video. So hang around till then. In the meantime, we'll look at these other things. Don't forget to subscribe if it's your first time here and click the bell icon to see my new videos. It's my mailbag videos, but repairs and things like that I do and review videos. Lots of stuff I do. Found to be something you like. Check the playlist at the end as well. And also click the thumbs up if you like the video as you watch it. Okay, so these are some IEC input ports. So these are filters, mains AC input filters. I got these just as stock really. I didn't really need them yet, but I've had to replace these things in the past and they've been really handy things to have. And I thought I'd get a couple because I haven't actually had one blow up in a while. I'm thinking it's about due. Earthed pin at the back there, so she onto the chassis, so that will ground the chassis at the same time. Although you wouldn't rely on that, you'd do a proper earth point anyway. Yeah, well, I don't know, suspects here. So Delta 06 GEE G3E, 50 60 hertz, 115 to 250 volt. So universal, and there's a, the criteria there, so it's 0.1 microfarad X2 cap and two 300 picofarad Y class caps. That's what's inside it. Oh, and of course, inductor 0.8. Mini Henry inductor. So I might need to have different filtering characteristics depending on your products, but generally any filter is better than no filter. And these also rated at 6 amps as well, I should probably specify that. 8 amps or 6 amps, depending on how you read it. There will be links down below for most of these arms as well. If I can put a link there will be one. So you get to buy these things yourself too. But at the very least go and look at the listings. Learn more about them. If you do use my links down below, then um, that actually helps the channel out as well because I get affiliate commissions and stuff from most of those items which helps me to buy more items from our bag and stuff like that it's in here, it's getting smaller and smaller <laughs> uh, right, okay, this is a VCO so you have a control system which is I think it's five volts it runs off pretty sure it's five volts and you have a control voltage that comes in which adjusts the reactor diode which is across the coil which makes the coil oscillate a certain frequency by changing the voltage you change the oscillation frequency it actually outputs a frequency here the frequency is determined by the coil and the capacitors and the reactor diode this is actually an equivalent circuit to what is in the Solotron 7061 as the clock generator so it runs at 49.152 megahertz and s mains locked so it's locked to the mains ac frequency and it samples that and it's actually used as a error correction voltage which comes through here from a separate circuit will come into this pin effectively and tune this oscillator so it matches the frequency of the line coming in so it's in sync with it in phase that's done to minimise noise on the readings it takes. So it mains noise becomes irrelevant because it becomes in sync with it and therefore it's always taking samples at the same time. Anyway, this is an equivalent circuit to what is inside the Solotron. It has a little plug-in board on the main board. Can't be the actual PCB number now. It's basically this circuit plus a few other bits and pieces on there as well. It's got some buffering stuff and some amplifiers and stuff like that built into it but it's very similar to this. And I thought I'd just play around with it one of these things a little bit. It's interesting. Plus I'm not sure I'm getting a good performance out of the one that's in the Solotron. It doesn't seem to be locking cleanly, I'm not sure. But this is an equivalent circuit so I could potentially just drop this in and use it. Potentially, it may or may not need amplification, I'm not sure. So this is the module here. As you can see it's $30 and Zealand. I think this is an element 14 package. Yes it is. You've got a free bag, I can use that later. So there's some capacitors, nothing too exciting here. 3300 microfarad, 25 volt axial caps. I think I needed those because I have a drawer which is almost empty. But then I've only got two in there. Now I've got stock. This is another crystal. Well, it's another oscillator. 49.152 megahertz. It's not a TCX, so it's a standard oscillator this time. Cheap. I think it's like a dollar or something. It's really, really, really cheap. It's incredible. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members. 
help to uh, finance my channel a little bit, give me a little bit of income from that, and helps me to buy up this for my bag and for bits of Tesco in the fricks. It's all very helpful. It costs a lot of money to run a YouTube channel, at least it costs a lot of money for me to run my YouTube channel. I spend quite a bit. There's only so much money I can spare to spend, and having the donations and contributions from supporters is very helpful. You don't have to support me financially either, you can just support me by doing a thumbs up on the video, or even commenting down below and having a chat, sharing the video, all those sorts of things help me as well. You don't have to financially contribute, you can just be just doing that. That's of great benefit in itself. So this is something I've purchased recently, obviously, because I thought I needed one. So as you can see, this is an op-amp tester. So it does the single op-amps and it does dual op-amps. So I think it just flashes LEDs or something like that, I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll have to figure that out and have a play around with it. When you've got these op-amps, you never quite know really how good they are. I mean, what it came about is when I was doing my testing recently of those other op-amps. So I've got my test jig over here, which I've made, which I just plugged the op-amps into as these round ones. Plug those in and tested them out to see if it worked. Plug this one into this board. What was the pin out for this thing? I don't remember. I'm tempted to plug that in and see if it works. Alright, so I've plugged in this faulty device over here, which I know is a bad one. I've got power hooked up. It's actually power up supply. Just drop the voltage down slightly, a bit too high. Alright, let's power this thing up and see what happens. Drawing 52 milliamps, and we have an LED lit. Doesn't seem to be doing much at all. Just sitting there. Guess that's wrong. So here is a UA741, which is very similar to the part which should be in there. Let's just turn the power off, I'll unplug it. Or whilst I plug it in. Let's just test it with a brand new op amp, which is of the correct footprint. Right. Let's power this on. And it's flipped. And then it's just pulsing slightly. The one's pulsing, and that one's on. Okay, I'm guessing then that red means bad, green means good. Could be as simple as that. Right, so I dropped in a LM307, 53 milliamps or so, green light. Excellent. That seems to work just fine. So I think this op amp test would be really handy because, I mean, what I was using before was this test jig which I just threw together so I could test these, these um, is it 714 op amps, which I pulled out of the Datron, I think it was. Yeah, that's from the Datron, uh, 4700 calibrator. So I was doing testing on these, trying to track stuff down. And um, I made this little test jig just here, and all this is this little pot, which adjusts the voltage on the input pin of the op amp, and then I could measure the input and the output voltage to make sure they track, and I had to basically a 10 to one, roughly, multiplier on that, so I could actually see if it's amplifying properly and stuff like that. But uh, a go, no go might be sufficient, I'd imagine. Handy thing, I might even put that in a little box or something, Maybe put some zip sockets on it. And now we have this item. Now looks like I said a bit of a rough prep here. Bag's a bit torn and you know, dented and stuff over here. And yeah, well, you know. Anyway, let's get into it. Oh, look, it's upside down. It's a jabe. UD1200. It's a soldering station. Warranty card. Not even going to use that anyway. Instructions. Chinese to start with. More Chinese. More Chinese. There we go. Here's English. All the different tips you can get. Nice. So it uses the 245 chip, I believe, like a JVC phone. There you go. That's what it looks like, it's all shrink wrapped and everything. So I don't want to go too much into this one. Not right now. Well, not, but I've broken it now. <laughs> I don't want to go too much into it because I want to do a proper review video on this and go through the whole thing and um, so make sure you check that out. Watch out for that soon. It'll be very soon, in fact. It might, I might even have already done it. 
I'm not sure how soon this video will come out, but it might. It's either going to be like last week, or the done a review video, or potentially this week or next week. I'm not sure of the timing yet. But uh, excellent. So this side of the station here is a review item for Banggood. I should date that, I suppose. You know, even though it's just a mailbag video, this is at no cost to me from Banggood. So, for the sake of transparency. And so I'll be doing a review on this, so watch out for that coming up very soon. If you found your video interesting, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not subscribed, click the bell icon, have a chat down below in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Like, subscribe.